passion. Have you ever wanted something so hard that you tried everything in your power to make it happen? You put your best into it, you might have sacrificed something for it, but no matter how hard you tried, you just couldn't seem to get it, and in the pursuit of it, you probably experienced a lot of stress. I mean, the answer is probably yes, right? Well, now let me ask you this. Have you ever stopped wanting that same thing, or stopped thinking about that thing, or focused on something else, or simply relaxed and let go, and that same thing came to you, stress-free? I used to think this is the universe's way of playing games with us, that this was her way of telling us that we can't have what we want, not when we want it, that's for sure. But it wasn't until later that I started looking at it from a different perspective. What if this not wanting was actually us surrendering that desire? What if this was us finally letting that desire breathe and allowing the universe to take its course? Since I was a little girl, I knew I wanted to act. I also knew I wanted to write, but I didn't discover that until later on. Um, unfortunately, I come from a society that has led me to believe that actresses are equivalent to women, for lack of better word, of loose behavior. I didn't even think that being an actress was a real profession. But then as I started maturing, I started not caring about what other people said, and I just went for it. And I realized there wasn't anything else that I wanted to do in life than act. So I would come home, I would watch up to three classic movies a day, and because I came from a supportive and loving family, they encouraged me in my dream to pursue that what I loved most. So like all gullible and naive actors out there, at 17, I decided to move to LA. But obviously, I didn't realize that it wasn't as easy as they make it seem. No one discovers you at a coffee shop. Your good looks, even talents aren't always enough. It's just a matter of so many things coming together at the right time. So, I decided I'm still not going to give up. I was taking acting classes since I was 17, both in LA and abroad. I got a degree in film studies and creative writing. I wrote and starred in my own feature film. But year after year would go by and I still felt like I wasn't getting where I wanted to be. I was starting to feel stressed. I was sad, I was crying a lot. And then it got me thinking. What if I look at it from a different perspective? So, I found solace in self-help books that spoke about the law of attraction. I studied hard, I went to seminars, I did my best, and that really helped me for a while. I also started taking meditation classes, and I did occasional retreats where I would focus on self-reflection. I would also get intrigued by Buddhists and Sufis and others that other spiritual teachers that urge us to let go and have faith and know, as Rumi said, what you seek is seeking you. So I started wondering maybe what they meant was not far from the idea of surrender. To me, what surrender means, and before I want to tell you what that is, I want to let you know that I am not urging anyone to give up on their dreams. I believe in perseverance and hard work and doing your best. Surrendering does not mean laying back and waiting for everything to come your way. Surrendering means doing your best, working hard, and then allowing the universe to handle the rest. It's being free from thinking that the only way to your goals is through X, Y, and Z. It's being free from thinking that you're in control of the X, Y, and Z. It's surrendering to the fact that it's probably not always going to be the way you want it to be when you want to get something, but nonetheless, it will lead you there if you trust in the timing of the universe. So, I am still learning, but this is my personal experience with surrender and what happened with it. Before I knew it, I came across this book called The Surrender Experiment by Michael A. Singer. I kind of heard this word surrender the first time I was leaving my meditation class and the fellow student told me that he was going to be taking a class on surrendering. It, something clicked with it. I couldn't take the class because I was traveling, but I came home and right away I looked it up. 
surrender in relation to life. It was just something about that word that felt like the universe wanted me to explore. So I read that book, The Surrender Experiment with Michael A. Singer, and in short, in the book, Michael describes his experience with surrendering and how one day he decided to give in to everything that the universe threw at him and accept its challenges. The hardest thing was having faith and believing that it would lead him eventually to his desired outcome, when on the outside, it didn't look like it would. And at the end, it really did. And it led him to more beautiful places than what he imagined for himself. So this is my story and what happened with me. I've always been passionate about TED Talks. I've always wanted to do one. Not because I'm a performer, because I'm an actor, but because I genuinely think there's so many issues that need to be addressed in our community. Gender inequality, animal rights, societal issues, the film industry, there's just so many. So before this came along, I kind of decided, well, I'm not gonna wait for anyone to give me this opportunity. I'm gonna apply for the TEDx license. I didn't think I was gonna get it. After all, I'm just a young woman with ideas. But I applied, I did my best, I surrendered in a way, and I let it go. After a while, I heard back. Turns out I got the TEDx license. I was shocked, I was so excited. Finally, I can express my ideas, I can talk about what I love. And then I went through the rules list and realized I can't be a speaker at my own event. I'm like, great. I felt stupid, I felt bummed out, and I asked myself, well, why are you trying to organize this event if you don't get to express your opinions, which you think are so important to our community, and you know, you're an actor, you're a writer, why are you doing this? Why should you fly all the way from LA a couple of times to organize something that has nothing to do with you? So I let days go by, but something didn't sit well with me. It felt like I was being a hypocrite. I was always talking about how I want to improve on my community, and the moment it didn't involve me directly, I was backing out. And as is the perfect timing of the universe, this was around the time I was reading The Surrender Experiment. It has led me to reflect on my own actions. So I decided, why don't I do what Michael does in his book? Why don't I surrender to this opportunity that the universe is giving to me? So what, it doesn't have to do with acting or writing. So what, I might not get anything out of it directly in a sense of my career. So what if I don't get to be speaker? So what if I don't even know anyone that can help me? The most important thing is that I try and I go for it. And in my heart of hearts, I was doing this as a conscious choice of surrendering. So when I finally made the choice to organize the event, things started coming together. Shortly after, I got contacted by this guy whose father is a fascinating figure. He came to Baku, we met over the possibility of him being a speaker, and we bonded over a love of activism and film. And he let me know, out of nowhere, that he has this plan of helping young filmmakers in Azerbaijan. It just so happened that he recently purchased all this equipment that was needed for a movie that I am planning on shooting soon. He offered to me free of charge just because he wanted to help me. I don't know where that film is going or when that's gonna happen, but the fact is, is that if I have not taken on this opportunity that I thought had nothing to do with my desire, which is acting, which is writing, I would have never met this man that was basically giving me that which I needed. But that's not even the end of the story. A while ago, I got contacted by the organizer of this very event asking for tickets for mine. I let him know they weren't available. We said our goodbyes. And then I started thinking, what if I, apply to be a speaker at this event. I'm not organizing it, and I know exactly what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the experience that has led me here. And here I am, and not only I get to stand up here, along the way I met the most incredible people I would have never met if this wasn't for this thing where I made a conscious effort to surrender. Your success is not measured by the outcome. I don't know what my outcome is. I'm still struggling. I'm still stressed out a lot. But what I'm trying to learn, and what I hope you learn as well, is that you should not be at the mercy of getting the immediate result of what you desire. What you desire, you can have. You have to work for it. You have to want it. You have to do your best. But then you have to surrender that outcome. You have to have faith that when the time is right, it will come to you, and it will probably not be in the way you expected it for yourself, but nonetheless, it will be there. And at the end, you will have no doubt that this is where you're supposed to be. Michael says in his book, once you're ready to let go of yourself, life becomes your friend, your teacher, your secret lover. Once life's way becomes your way, 
there is great peace and all the noise stops. If there is something that you really, really want for yourself and you're working really hard to get it, but somehow it's just not working out for you and you're always stressed out and you're doing your best and you're just wondering why it's not happening, just don't give up, surrender. There is a difference and you have nothing to lose by trying. And if you're still not convinced, I urge you to do what the Buddha said. Come and see for yourself. Thank you.